I live in Georgia now, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. you moved to the ATL on us. Yeah, I moved to the ATL. Georgia ATA. Peach. Now, I, you know, I got some friends I used to talk to on the phone, and I didn't know where they lived at until I got to Georgia, right? <laughs> right, right. And um, so as a friend that they said, hey, man, you, when you get down here, we're going to come over, we're going to play some cards, we're going to play some bones, we're going to do this, 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 this. I right. like, hey, man, count me in. I love them dominoes. You know, them dominoes, Slap them right? Slap bones, man. Slap them bones. So I hadn't seen him since he left Tennessee, mm. right? But <laughs> okay. he'd been living in Georgia for 15 plus years. Oh. Okay. So he gave me the address and uh, I'm like, what in the hell is L-O-T-1? You know what I mean? Lot one? It was lot one. Yeah. He was in the trailer park. <laughs> so I pulled. You know I mean, what? I didn't know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with people living in a lot. Uh, but it is wrong, something wrong you live in a trailer park. And I'm about to explain why. Please do. Oh, Lord. So I pulled up, and, you know, he sticks his head out of the door. You know, I'm all, we out, we're over here, right? <laughs> and uh, I pull up behind like eight other cars <laughs> in the street. I guess it was the street. Uh, look, like sidewalk to me, but uh, walked in and we playing car. I'm having a good time, man. Right. And we got the TV on, watching the game. Okay. And then I hear this damn um, tornado warning. Oh, Lord. Okay. Bad place to be. But yeah. So. Like you in Kansas. <laughs> uh, no, we're not in Kansas right. anymore. Needless to say, uh, I got the hell up out of here. I bet you did. I bet you did. All hear is uh, them say, Rod, bring back some beer. <laughs> He's like, I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, blow in with us every Monday <laughs> for the audio version of the Don Sun Parkers. And every Wednesday, uh, check us out on YouTube, channel title D. Dun Sun Podcast. <laughs> All right. And you know, I love when Andy go to these cities, right? So, <laughs> and we call it Gossip in the City with Andy. Moss Point, Mississippi. Chasing women is like trying to get rich on stocks. <laughs> I tried to tell Harold's dumbass. Banks take 97% of your money and invest it into the market. <laughs> Most women will take up 90% of your time and invest it into a Negro named Marcus. <laughs> Fellas, stay woke or you'll be broken, broken. Give her 3% and then you invest the other 97% into you. You dig it? Yeah, I dig yeah. it. Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh-oh. Uncle Rico. Yeah. I see why it's so hard to find a good woman in Portsmouth. <laughs> I took this female to this nice lounge. It had a waiting list. They asked her to write her name on the list and we'll call your name. We waited for two hours listening to everyone else's name being called. Come to find out, this hoe couldn't read nor write. Who the heck is Barbarian? You mean you didn't know how to spell your own name, Barbara? Damn. They said Ohio. No clue. McDonald's on 1219 North Gettysburg in Dayton. I was trying to figure out why the cars were lined up out in the street to this raggedy ass place. 3.2 rating out of a 5. Come to 
find out they had a secret <laughs> menu. Oh, man. Come to find out you could order a big cave pumpkin spice latte <laughs> with crushed coca leaves and a McFlurry with Oregon cookies and substitute the cookies for Crack Rock. Oh, Lord. I said, no, nah, just give me a Big Mac, and I'm good. <laughs> she said, we're out. We're out. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, we're going to have to rename this, but it's called Dunce on Trivia. <laughs> it's the Dunce and Trivial Show. This is how it goes. You yeah. ask four yeah. questions, you have yeah. to get three out of four right. Yeah. If not, you're a dumbass. Right. And here's your host. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should like play spin the bottle, and whoever <laughs> gets picked gets picked. Right. Um, so if I look to my left, <laughs> it's no. me. It's you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number one. Okay. Which city is known as the city of brotherly love? Is it A? Philadelphia. I sound like a mad scientist, don't I? <laughs> yes! Is it A? Philadelphia or B? Chicago. Man. I don't even want to get this one right. That's my wife's team. But it's Philadelphia. <laughs> You're right. On. You're right. <laughs> yes. He's a yes. Philly fan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay. right. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, that's how he's on from The Exorcist. But I can't say what she said. Uh, <laughs> Y'all have seen when she's in the. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes, Sometimes I don't. <laughs> I'm enjoying that mound. Yeah. Mound don't. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's go. All right. Question number two. Which chess piece can only move diagonally? Is it A, bishop, or B, queen? Aha! Bishop. You're right, huh? Yeah. Dang, you got the g- <laughs> wow. Wow. Played a little chess in my day. Okay. <laughs> Question number three. Which country was the Caesar salad invented? Uh-oh. Was it in Mexico? Or Italy? Or Italy. Italy. <laughs> How do you know Italy? Hey, it better be. Uh, <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other choice? Mexico. Oh, you got to be kidding me, right? The hit is Caesar. Caesar? Hey, Caesar? Oh, I ain't thinking about that. I ain't mean, I'm, I'm thinking tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Caesar is not from Rome. Caesar, right. the dictator, is from Rome. Yeah. But Caesar is a common name, I believe, in Mexico. You know Caesar. I didn't know that. Yeah. Caesar! I learned something new. Every name. All, All right. right. Number four. Number four, I got to get this one right. You got to get this one, huh? I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Use a dumbass. Use a dumbass to be. <laughs> <laughs> Question. <laughs> Question. All right. Question number four. All right. A tick bite. Can make you allergic to what food? A, red meat, or B, jack on. What? A tick bite can make you allergic to what food? A, red meat, or B, jack on. Mm. I can repeat that if you I'm want. I'm going to go red meat, man. You're right, huh? Okay, I guess that one. Got Damn! Right now. I don't love me some chicken. Man, I'll be my chicken. <laughs> Good job, huh? Right. Good, Good job. job. Ooh, that dumb ass this week. <laughs> Good job. I guess y'all never... Look, from here on out, y'all not going to be scared of the dozen mm-hmm. trivia no. now, right? Oh, no, and he's going to try and make it harder, huh? Oh, yeah, Lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all didn't smarten up. All right. Shadow Montana. Let's get it. Let's get it. Mm. La ciencia. What did they say? Um, uh, la ciencia. Yeah. Uh, it's that's just something about it later. It's groovy though. Groovy. Oh 
Oh yeah, groove it. Montana is the crazy. Montana is the crazy. Do you want my opinion? opinion? Yeah. It's maybe game over for ya. So today's letter is titled Successful and Unsuccessful Uh oh. from FL in Marietta, Georgia. Uh-oh. Age range again, 25 to 35. Oh, a dreamer. Millennials. A dreamer and non-believer. Mm-hmm. All right. So it reads, it makes you wonder how I can drive through a neighborhood and I could see a bunch of guys sitting on a wall next to a convenience store holding what appears to be a brown paper bag. <laughs> Where where did it go wrong? Or maybe what seems right? Or I can drive downtown, quote unquote, midtown and see guys and women in suits and ties, expensive shoes, nice dresses. What's the difference? How did they get to that point? And how did the others not arrive? Or did they? Maybe they used to be those guys and gals in midtown years ago. Is it hard work, bad luck, negative thinking or positive thinking? Crazy how some make a mistake once and it's over. Others make a mistake and get 10, 15, 20 chances, and they become prominent, or should I say they have a story to tell. When I drive through Midtown, shout out to Cafe Intermezzo, I say to myself, most crimes are corporate crimes. And when I drive through and see the hood, where is the crime? I don't hear the crime. I only see it on TV after the fact. Hmm. I hear all the time on the news, on social media, about parents bribing and paying their way, paying the way for their kids to get into schools. Drunks could only dream of getting their kids in. There's a lot of thoughts going through my mind. Listen to this. How come one group of people are successful and another group of people can be unsuccessful? Let me ponder. Let's just hypothetically say, and I'm daydreaming in my own mind, that the drunk I see has kids as well. Somebody is sending these black women to college, but still, They have access to money and higher education, right? So all you have to do is pay for tuition. The corporate granddaddies and parents pay for their kids' tuition and the drunks pay for their kids' tuition as well. But the bigger question is, why is the acceptance rate in the top universities so high for them and why is it so low for the drunks? Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? (laughs) Basically what he asked. (laughs) So... I just want to say that it seems like whoever creates the system makes the rules. The group of people that's trying to be a part of a system are probably excluded because of the rules. It's all about creating the system and the system reveals the rules. But the kids of the drunks try to adjust and go to school based off of the rules for no more than an average of 800 take home every two weeks. Yes, if you make 80K a year, you have bills and student loans. So this is what's left. (laughs) Credit cards are not income. That's called living on life support. (laughs) I'll write in again one day. Just ponder that thought, you drunks. What? (laughs) Damn. (laughs) Andy, what you think about this this letter? Just waking up in the morning. Gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seems kind of odd. No, no barking, barking from, from the dog, dog, no smog. And mama, mama cooking cook breakfast with, with no hog. I got my grub well, on, but didn't pig yeah. out. Finally got a call from a girl I want to dig out. This letter, did Ice Cube write this shit? <laughs> uh, what you think? But it, it boils down to, like he pretty much said, education. Bad choices, you know. Product of where you come from, your environment, man. Yeah. You, you know, and I don't blame everything on your environment. Yeah. Because it's up to an individual to create his own pathway in yeah. life, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, regardless of the circumstances that you're in, you don't have to succumb to them. Right. You, it's a mindset that you have to uh, develop or want to achieve more for yourself. Don't buy into, man, look, I don't see people come up in the ghetto and make it out. Mm -hmm. Because they had the mindset that they didn't want to live in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. They despised it, and they want to do better for themselves. And that's what every individual has to do, man. You have to develop a mindset that you want to do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't succumb to your circumstance or your environment, of mm-hmm. your environment. You know, you got to want to achieve more in life, man. So 
So I'm not going to blame it on the environment altogether. I mean, it plays a role. I get it. Right. It does play a role. But you can, you can grow out of it and you can exceed it if mm-hmm. you choose to. Or you can choose to just succumb to it and let it gobble you up. Right. You know, so it's, it's about mindset and being strong enough to want to achieve more in your life, want more for yourself, man. Yeah, mm. yeah. That's what it boils down to me, for me, my opinion. Okay. Yeah, Oliver, what you think? I really, really think the guy that wrote this is drunk. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this mofo talking about systems and crimes and rules, it's CSI shit. No offense, but the person that wrote this sounds like a bus driver or a recovery crackhead turned alcoholic or something. Although not that there's anything wrong with being a bus driver or a recovering crackhead for that matter, but it sounds fucking nuts. Montana, what you think? Um, I think what Unk says like really, really resonates in regards to you don't have to be a product of your environment because also we know that you have people who are millionaires or celebrities and then they have kids that go the opposite direction right. and they are what somebody may consider a failure. Yeah. And then you have somebody that comes from the hood, ghetto, whatever you want to call it, and they go on to be the most successful person ever. So I think it's up to the individual to determine what direction they want to go in, but understand Yes, the world has rules that we may not like. There are checks and balances that we may not agree with. However, you don't have to give in to those circumstances. It's a way to work through and around anything that you see in front of you. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, it's fair if he wants to sit there and ponder on these hypothetical situations. I don't really know what he's getting out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, However, if he really wants to, you know, take a deep dive into the outcomes of people based on what's around them. I think it's really just up to the individual. What is it that you truly desire to do, to become, to move away from? Because some people are okay with staying in the ghetto. That's what they like. Oh, mm-hmm. that's cool too. Some people look at the success of a parent or whoever and say, I want to be as great as them or better, you know? So it's up to the individual. You can't pl- blame the government or circumstances or anything on your entire success or failure. Like Unc said, it does play a role. Um, I think sometimes it can just be used as a motivation or a deterrence not to do that so you don't wind up in that situation. But it's really up to the individual to determine, you know, where they want to go in this life. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So this episode, we cover cheat codes to success. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, the benefits. Have you ever heard of something called Kaizen? K A Z I A. Do them all the time at work. Say that again. K A Kaizen. Kaizen. K is in kangaroo. A is in apple. Z is in Zorro. I is in ice. A is in apple. N is in Nancy. Kaizen. Uh-huh. Improvement. Constant yep. improvement. Kaizen. I do them at work all the time. Mm-hmm. We, have to, oh. we have to do three. We have to do three, three a year. Oh no, I never heard. Kaizen. Of that. And it's about improving a process, or or anything to to move you forward. Basically, constant improvement. Constant and it improvement. comes out of, I think it came out of Japan. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. To, yeah, Japan. Yeah. Japan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Toyota uses it yeah. in yeah. Japanese companies. Yeah. Now, Kaizen, like Ankh said, is monthly process. The purpose is simply, but small, to put small improvements will yield large results in terms of overall improvement in the area of focus. Now, believe it or not, I've been using this process for about three years, about four years now. Yeah. I, I read a book called Toyota Way of Management, mm-hmm. and I found out this word called Kaizen, and I use it in everything, just about everything I do, whether it be this podcast or whether it be any events outside of that. Mm. Every month, I try to improve constantly, whatever I do. Not yeah. everything in life, but whatever I do. Yeah. And it's helped me out big time mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah. on there. Yeah. Now, the um, effects of success you know we're giving you cheat codes here now criticism something that we all go through whether we're doing something or we're not now criticism is the key to success believe it or not so we're gonna do this a little different montana and um whoever wants to tackle this first how do y'all deal with criticism now when i ask this question i'm not saying oh i just do it just knock it off uh, I just, you know, it doesn't phase me. Yeah. I'm superwoman or no. super guy. No, 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 no. Could y'all give me some really deep insight to criticism, how it affects y'all that people, <sighs> relating to people, I'm not saying it has to be bad, but relating to people who 
are listening to the podcast and might come through criticism of Montana, let me know how this criticism <laughs> criticism really, really, really feels. So let me tell you something. The, get get down and dirty let with me it, Montana. Let me tell you something, because I had to talk to somebody that I pay every month about this. <laughs> okay. You said you pay? I, had, I pay I pay somebody to talk to them, if you know what that means. Oh, so. oh, no, oh, you know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, so criticism, I used to think that I took criticism well, that it was like, no big deal. You could say whatever to me and it's just going to roll off my shoulder. No, I realized that I can own the criticism eventually, but I don't want to confront it. Like it, re realistically, even if it's something I need to improve, I'm definitely going to hear you out. I'm going to receive your message, right. but internally I'm probably cringing the whole time. Okay. And it's a really a struggle, especially when I know that it's something that is coming up. So like Anke said, many episodes, I try to put myself in positions where people don't have to come and tell me, right. you need to fix this or why are you doing this? However, the way that life works, you know, in relationships and things of that nature, you aren't going to get it right 100% of the time. Right. So it may be constructive criticism, but it's still criticism. Right. So what I've just found for me, criticism is cringeworthy. I don't really like to hear it or deal with it. However, what I find is that ownership and accountability makes it a lot easier to push through it. So even if it's a conversation I don't want to have, I don't want to hear this stuff. If I can hear the person out, have a healthy conversation about it and then own that, okay, I was wrong or I apologize. I should have done something differently. Whatever ownership looks like and take accountability for going forward, I'm going to make a conscious effort to do better so that this does not happen again. Right. You know, I think that helps the other person to receive your apology or whatever it is a whole lot better versus saying like trying to defend your wrongness. Um, and sometimes even if I don't feel like I was wrong. You still just got to take it. You got to take what they're giving to you, you right. know, and be able to just move forward, knowing that even if I didn't agree with all five things that you said, I'm sure it was something within that message that I needed to hear and I need to work on. Mm -hmm. So I don't, to be clear, I don't really like it. <laughs> However, I deal with it and I push through it. And I've just found in my recent experience, I would say of, you know, um, in everyday life, if I'm encountering that, to just own it, take accountability, address it head on, and really be serious about working to not do it again. We're human, so right. we're not going to be perfect all the time. You may make a mistake again, but hopefully it's not to the same magnitude it was the first time, right. and hopefully it's not in the same capacity. Like, you didn't just go and do the same thing a person just told you was wrong. Right. You know, so I just try to get better and I really try not to make mistakes, but I do, right. you know, so okay. that's cool where stuff, I am. Good stuff, Montana. We yeah. celebrate you. We yeah. celebrate Thank you, you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What do you think about when you're criticized or yeah. how does it make you feel? Motivated. Okay. Mm. Uh, it's, like I said, and she pointed to it, I always try to, I critique myself a lot on my job and, um, uh, I'm always second and third guessing myself, did I do it right? And I go back and recheck myself constantly mm -hmm. to make sure I got it right. So I'm always critiquing myself, but uh, I always use, and sometimes I don't get it right and I have, to have those conversations, mm -hmm. but I use it as a motivation, man, because um, you always want to be successful in life, for one. You want you want to be the one to say, okay, he's a hard worker, mm -hmm. he going to I can count on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, that's what it boils down to. Can I count on you? Right. To get it right. Mm -hmm. Even if you got it wrong, now that I done showed you what to do, now can I count on you to get it right? Yeah. Right. You know, credibility and accountability. Like she said, that's what people want to see. It. Uh, the anyone, uh, employer, employer want to see all the employees, you know? So, man, I, like, I take it as a motivation. I thrive in it. I mm -hmm. don't run away or shy away from it anything like that nature, no confrontations. And I, I don't, I don't, it may be what you said, criticizing. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you feel like when somebody, and, right. and, and, and it doesn't have to be work. It could be outside of work. Right. It'd be something that you want to do. Right. And they'd be like, Hey, uh, that's garbage. No, uh, let's see. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, if if it is, then prove to me. Yeah, boy, yeah. You better prove to me that it's garbage now. All you better right. prove it to me. That's but, not the way to take it off. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, but, but but I'm always willing to, to go out out of my way to to do the job and get it right, man. Because like I said, I don't like my boss coming to me saying 
you didn't do this right. Mm-hmm. I've just always been that way. I've always been a go-getter, man, yeah. all my life. I mean, I, my first job, I was shining shoes when I was 12 and 13 years old, man. So what if somebody Damn said time. to you, if you, they shine shoes, they'd be like, hey, this is garbage. The guy no, across the street I, is No, shining. because, hey, look, I learned, look, look. Hey, then I'm going to try to do mine better. Okay. Yeah, because I don't like to be outdone. I, I, just, I just like to. I'm a workaholic okay. in a sense that I like to. I'm a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. I like to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's why I guess I always second and third guess myself on my job, make sure I'm doing it right. Mm-hmm. I go back and recheck myself. And it, and that Boston, you know, you got different departments in my job. And I can say, my boss can say, and they can all say, my department is the only department mm-hmm. on the campus Three year running, 100% inventory accuracy. Mm-hmm. Can no other department claim that on my job? Mm-hmm. Right. He said, How you do it? I said, Because I don't trust myself. He said, What you mean? I said, I'll, I don't take anything for granted. Mm-hmm. I go back and recheck myself mm-hmm. constantly. Mm-hmm. I know I did it right. Yeah. I still go back and recheck yeah. it. <laughs> Gotta be sure. You know what I'm saying? And, and I just, that's just in me. I want to make sure I got it right. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I don't want to hear, oh, man, you don't lost a million dollars worth of him. Oh, no. Not on my I ain't wife. trying to have that conversation. Right. Because them not good conversations. Yeah. All right. So I just I just constantly check myself, man. All right. So Question. you bring me some criticism, I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm, you know. You're going to run through the brick wall. No, but if you show me where I messed up at, I'm going to accept it and, and make it right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Question number two to each of y'all. Mm. These are tough questions, so if y'all want to tap out, just go like that. <laughs> no such thing. Okay. Mm. Montana. Now, this is attached to success. So all these questions are attached to success. Mm-hmm. What do you fear most? What do you fear most in life? What do I fear easy most me. in life? That should be easy. Go, you want not the <laughs> obvious. Yeah, failure. Oh, I was gonna say. Well, no, I, I, well, failure to some. You can that may it can be, be a personal. piece of it. It doesn't have to be business. So my fear most in life right now is probably not stepping into my full potential or gift that we're speaking about. Mm. You know, because mm. I feel like it's so many working parts. I feel like as I get older and I grow and I learn more, I try to figure out or make sure that. I know what my gift is or I know what my purpose is, but sometimes you question, like, is that it? Like, am I sure is that it? Because ultimately, you know, things could feel right, but it could not be it. So Mm -hmm. my thing is, as I go through this life, I just want to be in a space where I am walking in that purpose and, and on the straight and narrow of that, but just not going through life and never have truly tapped into it, you Mm -hmm. know, because I know that, you know, Life doesn't end when we die. That's a whole nother conversation. Uh oh. And That's right. you know, um, sure right. uh oh. I just want to be able when I have to answer those kinds of questions, mm-hmm. being able to know that I did all I could to try to live up to my full potential of my purpose and my gift. So that's one of my, I would say, stands out my biggest fear with the space and place that I'm in my life right now is trying to figure out what that is because I don't want to miss out and waste time walking in something that I think is my gift or purpose right. and it's really not. Right. So just trying to figure that out so I can stand true to it and hone it and be, you know, the, as great as I can be within it while I am here on earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. What do you fear in life, huh? Failure. Failure? I don't, I don't like to fail, man. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what, what is failure? Does failure mean people can't depend on you or is it, what, what is that, it? That, I always want to be accountable as a person. I want to be a person who you say you can rely on. Okay. If I tell you something, you can count on it. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my little niece, uh, just the other day, uh, she's 12 years old, and I made her a promise. Mm-hmm. Last year, mm-hmm. when she was 11, I made her a promise. I said, look here, one thing I want you to do for me. She said, what's that? I want to make sure you stay in school Mm -hmm. and you graduate and you don't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I say every year when your birthday come, mm -hmm. if those things are wholly true, mm -hmm. I give you $100. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. She took it to her yesterday because it was her birthday. Right. No, she was waiting on it. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. Yeah, yeah, and I'm still in school. You, you know, you know, I mean, but these are the things, young, little young girls, little young girls, you know, because, mm -hmm. man, that world out there gobbling them up, man, and it's yeah. gobbling a lot of them up. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So I made her that promise. And when you make a kid a promise, you better hold true to oh, it. Oh, yeah. They never forget it. Because they'll never forget it. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I like keeping my word. Yeah. If I tell you I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. Do I'm it. not gonna tell you something and then don't do it. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna be a person. I'm gonna be a man of my word. Basically, yeah. what I'm saying. So Absolutely. if I, I promise you something, then that's what I'm gonna stand and do. I'm not gonna step out there and say I'm gonna do something and don't do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just don't operate like that, and it, I cringe at people who does that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, tell somebody they're gonna do something and they don't hold up to it. Yeah. And just yeah. Ah, Okay. It eats at me. So I just like to be a man of my word, man. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, two more questions and we're done here. Um, these are tough. Now, this one is just a a number. That's it. Okay. <laughs> if you want to expound on it, you can, mm -hmm. but we're not asking you to. Okay. On the scale from one to ten, ten being the highest, one being the lowest, right? So in other words, if you say, if I say, hey, do you like McDonald's? I might say four. Okay. Okay, out of ten. Ten meaning great, one meaning not so great. Gotcha. One. <laughs> <laughs> A McDonald's, I gotta give, gotta give Mc, in my, uh, I don't know. The, McDonald's ain't like it was when I was a kid. It don't change, <laughs> man. I know, man. I didn't think dog food would be fashionable. <laughs> I'm like, damn, it's, I feel like a damn dog. <laughs> uh, ordering through the damn drive-thru. Um, Montana. Yes. Scale from one to ten. Ten being extremely, one being not. And you don't have to expound on this because we, we just boom, boom, we go to the next question, all right? Okay. When it comes to success, are you happy with your life right now? Ten being absolutely, one being I'm not, Rod. It's not going well. Uh, Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, on the scale from one to ten, ten being the highest, one being like, no, Rod, it's not. Are you happy with your life right now when it comes to success? Like she said. Okay. Because I'm still striving. Okay. All right. If y'all want to answer, if if y'all want me to answer any one of these questions, just yeah. Me. What's your end number? All right. Question number four. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> I can only can you hear me now. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, huh? What's your answer? <laughs> All right, my answer is from one to ten. Am I happy with my life right now? When it comes to success, I'm about a seven. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm about yeah. a seven. Okay. okay. All right. So number four. This is the last question. When it comes to success, and I'm gonna throw it up. Whoever gets it first, get it. When it comes to success, if you can go back in time. What would you change about yourself to be more successful today? Mm. And when I say go back in time, I'm talking about 15 years ago. You know, I could give you, I'm going to get this answer. And I'm going to say the only reason I'm not. So what I normally would say is I probably would not go to college. Whoa, this is what? I probably would not go to college. Then you wouldn't be a. However. Okay. Um, The reason I feel like if nothing else, I went to college is to meet some of the most amazing friends ever that I have. And some of me and my friends always say that, like, we went to college just so we could meet each other. Like, yeah. I wouldn't have met certain people if I never went. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be an answer, but I wouldn't have met my friends, so I can't say that. But so 15 years ago, if we had to go back and change something about ourselves. That you, yeah, change about yourself. Our life would, or something. That, that, that you know would help you out today. I would... Uh, I would have started investing in stock when I was 12. So. <laughs> and, uh, hey, hey, and I feel cheated on that question. Okay. Why? Because she didn't go back far enough for me. <laughs> okay. Um, 15 about, years ain't far enough for me. All right. How about you want to go back? <laughs> yeah. All right. We go. Oh, okay. I graduated, right, I graduated high school in 1976. All right. Let's go back. Yeah. So go back. <laughs> Let's All right, go let's back. go back 40, 45 nah, years, huh? Okay, okay nah, 45 nah, nah, years. No, 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 no. What year did you go into the Army? 1976, right out of high school. What year did you get out? 
I got out in 82. Okay, so in 1983, what would you have liked to have done then to set you up for success today? Pursued the things that, I, that was given to me. Like what? College. College, okay. Yeah, I, I received a, uh, outside of the, the military grant that they give you to go to college and all of that, yeah. I had received an extra one to go to a Hampton University. What? Yeah, because I um, the military give you a test. I can bring it here and show it to y'all. I still got this thing right now, man, and I, I dread it every time I look at it. Um, when you go in the military, they give you an aptitude test. It's like the um, SAT, the thing you take when you go yeah. to college and all of SAT, that. SAT, ACT, The military yeah. have one, too. Uh-huh. But I'm the ASVAB? It. Yeah, I'm going to bring it to y'all. I'm going to show it to y'all. So it's a, we was in a, a platoon, over 1,500 soldiers. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You was number one? Number one. What? I scored the awesome. highest score. I scored the highest score. And they said this is well towards your military career and the blah, 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 all this stuff. And they gave me an extra thing to go to Hampton Institute in Chicago from Virginia. Yeah. Hampton Institute, free of charge and everything. And I ain't pursued none of that stuff. Why not, huh? Caught up in the world, ripping and running, doing stupid shit. Yeah. Yep. Man, the women are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, no offense, Montana. Yeah, no, serious, but serious. <laughs> women are you know just so. And I, and I, and I look at it. I still got this stuff, man. Mm-hmm. And I look at it and so say, man, why did I ain't take advantage of this stuff? Mm. That's that's real. But I'm over talking about I would have not win. Yeah, I did take advantage of it. Mm. And I wish I had took advantage of it. But oh, I was man. doing dumb stuff at the time, man. I was young. Yeah. Thought I knew it all. Ripping and running, having fun. and. Mm-hmm. Going to this city and that city and just right. wasn't thinking about it thinking in that about way. It. In that mm. way. Mm. Yeah. So I think ultimately mine would have just been I, I think I still would have went to college, but I just think I would have pursued probably would have pursued more entrepreneur type things mm-hmm. much sooner in life. What would be know? one? What would be one? Um, if you wish to reveal one thing, one. I think that I wanted, well, this may not be, well, I guess this is like being self-employed. I used right. to want to be an actress, like really bad. Okay. Like I was really interested in like becoming, whether it be an actress or like a TV personality. And you and, still want to do that now? Mm, not so much. Huh. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I kind of am on TV right yeah. now. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, smile. Look, look. It's funny she would say that. You know, I should tell my mom all the time when I was a kid. What's man. that? I was gonna be the first black astronaut. Man, and I said, been, I wanted said to that I too. Wanted, I love, no, I love space. I love space. Yeah. Oh, I, love, oh, I said that too. I love travel. I love until that damn thing blew up. I, I love, love, hey. I love, no, I love. Uh, um, he was like, love flight. That's why I went into aviation. When I went in the military, I went into aviation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that yeah, I love flying and all that kind of stuff, man. I, Me too. I like, we used to go to Huntsville and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I would have convinced like my mom or somebody. But to then let I got me, caught up in the world. Yeah, as we <laughs> always do. You said you, you I would have convinced somebody to like take me to like really pursue like acting, probably over college. Right. That's probably what I would. You would have loved that. Yeah, I probably so, you know. So what is your late. love? So what is your love now? <laughs> What do you mean? What like what? What's your question? So you're saying like okay, back then you would have pursued college. I mean acting. I would have pursued acting. So now over it's college. Um, now I think I just get that outlet through like podcasting. Okay, so you and I still kind of entertainment. Entertainment, it's just but in a you want to control way. it. Yeah, I'm in okay. control of it, but I definitely would have did the acting thing had I, you know, felt like it was. Uh, had I just known to press my parents about it, because mm-hmm. at that age, I'm just t- asking them, can they do it? You know, right. and they probably would have. So, yeah. you know. Well, I guess I don't have to answer that question. You do. I do? <laughs> yes. I didn't say nothing. So, yes. hey, thanks you for do. tuning in. You know Thanks what? for tuning in to the... <laughs> So if I can go back, yeah. Uh, damn, if I can go back one day. But no, <laughs> if I can go back, I don't know, 15 years ago, and change some things, I probably would. You know what? I thought I, I think about this every month, right? Hmm. I went through a lot of struggles to get to a certain point, and I feel that if I didn't go through those struggles, well, I wouldn't have tonight. been. I wouldn't be as aggressive and. Mm. Like tenacious yeah. as you are, you know what I mean. That's if what I took away, you. that's your drive. Yeah, if I wouldn't laugh at, like when people laugh at me 
or when people be like, man, that's a pipe dream. Like I like I write my goals and I tape them up on my bathroom uh, mirror, mm -hmm. type them out and stuff like that. Several women have said, that's a damn pipe dream. <laughs> Stop, you letting, see what I'm Stop letting them women in your bathroom. I know. I'm like, well, you know, you know, but um, <laughs> seriously, they've said that. No, but that's that's how you. Everybody's dream is there, and that but gives me so much. You gotta visualize it. If you can visualize it, you can yeah. achieve it, man. Yeah. Seriously, if you can visualize it, if you and then put you the, put action, if, if you put action behind it, and you then can you achieve are it, gonna yeah. go through some failures. Yeah. Do yeah. you feel? Does that? What does that do when they say it's a pipe dream? That just motivates you to push oh, you towards it better. Oh, it's freaking! This is before the podcast, yeah. so it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like Andy. It's lovely. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I'm not saying that, but trust me, we're going to get there. Yeah. But because of all of those pipe dreams, all of those this, that, that, yeah. laugh, and that, that, that. Yeah. So all of that is like energy for me, like yeah. coal to just keep. Uh, uh, see to keep driving. moving forward. Just yeah. driving. Just I can't drive. run out yeah. of it. It's yeah. like nuclear power. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's going to be so this. You, you know what I'm saying? But I learned how to pace myself. Yeah. So all you Dunsonians out there that want success, pace yourself. Don't yeah. try to do everything in one week. Right. Andy, you've been listening to all of this. What are your thoughts? Well, what would I change about myself? My grooming is immaculate oh and they're very well dressed in comparison to other dolls. <laughs> the dapper of the dance, so to speak. Mm. The ladies love my foul mouth. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm sure dark and handsome. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't change a motherfucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the fashion of the dolls. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Dunson Park. Thank you. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Peace out. Wait a minute.